everybody, welcome to my talk today where I'm going to discuss the clinical nurse educator role versus a university lecturer role. I'll cover the different types of nurse educator role, the similarities, positives and challenges in those different roles. Just to make it clear, this talk is for UK nurse educator roles. And as a career pathway, I found nurse education amazing. Um, the feedback you get when you support learners, you see them progressing and thriving in their role. Um, I'm still in touch with students who are now managers um, and some of them are now educators as well. Um, so it's an amazing role, but it's not all rosy. So I will talk through some of the challenges as well. So I hope you find this video helpful. Give me a thumbs up if you do. Remember, I've got lots of more videos on my YouTube channel um, to support nurses career development. So do check them out. So firstly, it's important to know that there's a range of different UK nurse educator roles and job titles. University lecturing roles tend to use standard job titles and job descriptions that are reflected globally across universities. So you have lecturer, senior lecturer, course or programme lead, head of department or faculty. Um, and so university job descriptions tend to be more standardised, whereas clinical nurse educator job descriptions currently in the UK are not so standardised. So when we look at typical university um, educator role, a nurse lecturer, they will support a module team to deliver the nursing curricula. They'll be allocated teaching sessions, marking to complete um, that semester, and they're usually a personal tutor for a group of students, often following them through from when they start a course to finish their degree. A senior lecturer, in comparison, will have more overall responsibility for delivering the module. They might have more roles in the department, as, as well as linked to governance, for example. But senior lecturers tend to be responsible for a team of lecturers in a module. So if someone's off sick, they ensure workloads shared across the team, markings completed on time, for example. Um, the overall course or programme lead is responsible for the delivery of the programme and the course. And then you've obviously got head of departments or faculties responsible for the whole department or faculties. Um, and if you review university job descriptions, you'll see nurse lecturer, senior lecturer roles with specific leadership responsibilities detailed, such as the curricula they need to deliver, the assessments they're responsible for, the marking and tutor groups they're going to support. And that's all pretty standard. Um, many universities also offer associate lecturing roles. These are roles where the university pays clinical nurses who might work full time or part time in their clinical role, who so they've got a job elsewhere and they will deliver some teaching hours for this university. So you might deliver, I don't know, 15 hours a semester, for example, and you let the course lead know what dates and times you can do. Um, and associate lecturing is a great way to see if university lecturing is for you and you can network with university staff, you can observe what they do. Um, in contrast, when we look at clinical educator roles, we have less standardisation across employers in the UK. And we've got this range of job titles and job descriptions. So we've got clinical edu nurse, nurse educator, practice development nurse practice educator, practice educator facilitator. And I recently saw a role advertised as a clinical educator for well-being. I hope you can hear that aeroplane. Um, across the vast range of roles, there tends to be two types of sort of clinical um, educator type roles. We've got clinical nurse educator roles whatever the title, that link to a specific local clinical area or field or a setting. So, for example, I worked as a practice development nurse in a neuroscience ward. And in that role, I supported a range of nurses and support workers to meet their learning, development and training needs. Whereas other clinical educators roles focus more on training and development at a corporate level. So they're not based in one local area, for example. So you might be leading a training program for a care certificate for support workers in a hospital trust or you might be on a team delivering preceptorship program for all newly registered nurses in a community setting um, but you're not in one area you're just delivering that um, training as part of your role 
You'll also see differences between clinica, clinical educator roles across employers because local managers can tweak job descriptions and they might focus a clinical educator role on their specific service needs. So, for example, one manager may expect a clinical educator to conduct audits and action plans and link those action plans to staff education, whereas another manager might expect an educator just to focus on delivering orientations, education programmes to staff. So it's helpful to talk to educators in roles that you aspire to, to gain insights and see what's available. Do informal visits, go and shadow people in those roles so you know what you're applying for and what you're aspiring for. Um, and I do have some helpful videos on my YouTube channel. So if you want some more detail of different types of nurse educator roles, how to become a nurse educator. And if you do have a job coming up, um, I have a video on how to prepare for a nurse educator interview. And also often you're asked to do a presentation. So I've got a video on how to prepare a presentation for a nurse interview. So I hope those help. So looking at future nurse education, interestingly, Health Education England released their educator workforce strategy, came out in March 2023. And that strategy describes how our future workforce is going to be dependent on high quality education and training in practice and academic settings. Some of the key strategic priorities focused on establishing and protecting educator time and resources to support the implementation of those workforce plans. Um, also introducing career frameworks for education for educators of all professions. So I think it's really good to see the importance of clinical education and university education being acknowledged. And we may see more standardisation of clinical educator roles, for example. Um, I've talked about the great range of, of job titles uh, and we might see more standardisation and career pathways to meet these strategic goals. So we need to watch this space and see how nurse education and future roles evolve in the future. So I thought it would be good to present some of the key positives and challenges being a clinical nurse educator or a university lecturer. Drawing from my own experiences, I've been a neurology sister, a practice development nurse in a neuroscience ward. Then I was a lecturer practitioner. I loved that role. That was a joint appointment between a hospital trust and a university. It's rarer to see lecturer practitioner roles nowadays. The lecturer practitioner or LP role was more prevalent when we moved from nurse training schools in the UK to university degree education. So now I don't I don't see as many lecturer practitioner roles advertised, but I have seen some. Um, and I've also been a university module lead for adult nursing modules, first, second, third year. And then I was a lead for a post registration master's neuroscience course. So I'm very happy to answer any questions on any educator roles. Just put them in the YouTube comments or you can DM me privately. So some of the positives and challenges of being a clinical nurse educator or university lecturer, um, and I've just picked on what I, I've experienced. What I would say, if any of you are nurse educators or university nurse lecturers, do share your experiences in the YouTube comments. Do you agree? Have you had different experiences? So some of my experiences in both of the roles as a practice development nurse and as a university lecturer, I tended to not work weekends and I didn't have work on unsocial hours and I had more back holidays off. So I had a better work life balance. I was moving into my late 20s, early 30s. And, you know, that was a, a conscious career move. Um, I didn't want to keep working weekends and bank holidays. So with university lecturing roles, you tend to have the same holidays as students. You have more time off in the summer, for example. But there were times at the end of semesters where I might need to work over a bank holiday to get my marking done. But that was more when I became a module lead. And when you start to go up a career ladder um, as a lecturer um, and, and say somebody in the team's office, you have to get that marking done on time. But I would always get my time back. Um, but majority of the time you would have weekends and back holidays off. So whereas in my practice development role on the neuroscience ward, I always had my weekends off. Um, they, the managers wanted me around when new starters and students were around in the week. If they were really sure or they had a crisis, they would ask me to do you know, an odd shift and I was very happy to. But generally, no weekends. And it was also cheaper for them not to pay me a band seven over the weekends. Um, and so what, it's something you do need to consider because if you I was a, um, a ward sister on band seven, my pay went down quite a lot because I didn't get those in social hours. But that was a conscious decision on my part for 
my work life balance. Um, one big positive I found in both roles, um, I tended you, you tend to work with a supportive team and have good job satisfaction. Educators by nature tend to be supportive, approachable, and the people I've worked with over the years and the learners are well as well. Uh, you know, they tend to be very grateful. Um, so you get a lot of positive feedback in the role. There are stresses in education, though. So when I worked with other clinical educators and university lecturers, I always felt supported and it was less st stressful, I would say, than the challenges I encountered when I worked clinically as a nursing sister. Um, but even though I found it less stressful, education brings its own type of stress. So you've got deadlines to deliver study days or courses. You might have project work defined by managers as a clinical educator. And as a university lecturer, you've got your marking to complete. So you've always got some time deadlines and project work on the go. Marking can be very time consuming if you're lecturing. And preparation of teaching plans and releasing module materials generated a lot of work in university. So these are different stresses to university work in education. You also might have a really disruptive group of students and you might find teaching when you first start teaching quite stressful. Um, you know, you're learning to find your feet and what works for you as a, as a tutor. But by um, practicing your teaching, getting some peer feedback, going on teaching course, it, it all helped develop my confidence. So some more positives and challenges. So education roles tend to be more autonomous and flexible than my previous staff nurse or nursing sister roles were. Um, I found my university lecturing role was the most flexible. So as a university lecturer, I was able to manage my calendar, work from home, choose which days to come into university. As long as I delivered my teaching on my days allocated, I met the needs of students, I offered personal tutor time um, and supported students when needed and modules were delivered to a good standard. Um, in the practice development role, the expectation was different. I was expected, understandably, to be on site um, and never work from home. But whilst on site, my practice development role still had that degree of flexibility and autonomy. So both roles were had that autonomous element. Um, in that, I would so as a practice development nurse, I would meet with managers. I would be able to work on projects, plan teaching, um, meeting the needs, the service needs. Um, and then so I was led by the, pro the project work and the what I was working on was led by managers and, and I, then I eventually collaborated and would lead work myself. But when I had my admin days, I was autonomous over those admin days. So I was able to learn and manage to manage my time effectively in my educator education role. So I was expected to plan projects, um, prepare teaching schedules myself, but the priorities I were given are led by the, were led by the service manager. And that's where some service managers will focus clinical nurse educator work on audits, clinical governance, it might be orientations, it might link to patient care planning, uh, whatever the priorities of the service are at that time. So it's very important to read job descriptions to know what type of role that you're going into. If you're looking at clinical um, a clinical nurse educator role, for example. Um, one of the biggest challenges for the clinical nurse educator role, I would say, in my practice development nurse role, was being pulled into numbers when there was sickness. Um, education study days sometimes had to be cancelled because the priorities are the needs of the patient. So then I would need to rebook and plan um, study days, for example, that I was um, leading. And then you have that pressure to deliver cancel sessions on top of what you already need to deliver anyway. Whereas in university, modules were planned a year in advance. So you knew what your student numbers were in advance. You had a set team to deliver modules according to student numbers. So I would say university lecturing was less chaotic than practice development because practice development links to clinical practice. And you never know what's going to happen in clinical practice. For example, with COVID, when wards had to be moved and, and clinical nurse educators were part of that. Um, so when there's urgent issues in clinical practice, you feel that you were really making a difference, though, in practice development role. I was supporting the team. So if there was an urgent educational issue that you can help with, um, and, you know, if you think about clinical nurse educators, how important they were during that role was during um, COVID pandemic and, and clinical nurse educators were delivering PP personal protective equipment training. And that training was changing week by week as the evidence base evolved according to whatever the new research was that was coming out. Um, 
So a lot of clinical nurse educators, practice development nurses gained great satisfaction that they were making a difference during that time, I would say. Um, service priorities affect the role. Um, the, it's evident that with clinical nurse educator role or practice development roles, they're influenced by what's going on in the service at that time and different service priorities. So do they have enough staff? Has there been some recent clinical incidents that need urgent education and staff training, for example? So the environments were, were there was lots of similarities, but there was difference to university lecturing. And one of the reasons why I really loved my lecturer practitioner role was I had a foot in both camps. Um, and, and so that was wonderful for me to see, um, to have sort of elements of both sides of the role. A positive in nurse education is that there is a wide variety of roles and different types of teaching on offer. So as a clinical educator, you might teach one to one at a bedside or in a community setting. Um, with one person at a time, you might have groups of people. As a corporate educator, you might deliver skills training to a group of 20 or 30 healthcare assistants or nurses or nurse, nursing associates. And you may do this in a team of one or two educators and run skills sessions. As a university lecturer, you may facilitate student seminars, you've got skills sessions, lectures. There's so many different types and ways and varieties of roles and teaching. So there's something out there for everybody, depending on the type of teaching um, you prefer. Um, it depends on the lecturing role as to which modules you're delivering. Um, I mean, it can take years to develop your confidence to feel like you can do lecturing, for example, but you don't necessarily have to do that if you go into university lecturing. You could look at skills lecturing. Um, and I didn't think I'd end up lecturing at university. I did, completed a post-registration education course and tried it. And, you know, that led me to go on and teach neurosciences, which was my specialist field. And then I moved on to adult nursing and then I started to change roles. But there's a great choice out there. Um, education structures and there's always an education lead. There's always a structure there. Wherever you work, there's going to be a lead for nurse education. If you're in universities, it's very clear structure. You've got your program leads, course, department heads, etc. And the same with most employers, you will have a nurse education lead that you can access for support. You can get advice from other educators. If you're aspiring to become a nurse educator, it's very helpful to network with that local education team. There's also national education. We've got Health Education England um, and there's lots of networking that takes place on social media, on Twitter, for example. There's lots of educational resources you can ac access uh, in our role and peer support. And as I said earlier, educators are usually very friendly and want to support others. Um, I've also released some videos under nurse education under a playlist to support any clinical nurse educators out there. For example, I've got a video on where to access support when you first start your role. I've got a video on welcoming students students or nursing associates. I've got one on clinical supervision, preceptorship and lots more. So do check them out as you hopefully you'll find them helpful. So these are some of the videos I was talking about. And I hope you found this talk helpful just to give you some of my, they're my personal insights. Um, so as I said, hopefully some other people may put some comments on in the YouTube. Um, were they similar? Are they different experiences? Um, if you have any questions at all, put them in YouTube comments. If you prefer to DM me privately, you can DM me on Twitter or on my website. So I hope you found this helpful.